Okay. Right. So let's start then. So we have last lecture we completed the second chapter of signal conditions. And now this lecture we will be starting third chapter. Okay. Process controllers. Uh, this topic I think uh, has already been introduced in second year control systems. Okay. But here we will discuss it. Here it was very uh, short introduction. Here we will be considering it in details. Okay. So let me share the screen then. Start the presentation. Okay. Right. So, management and system design chapter three process controller principles. And we are here in the first subtopic is continuous control. Let's have uh, a look at outline of the chapter okay so 3.1 3.2 and 3.3 are the top topics entity discontinuous controller here in discontinuous controller we will discuss two position mode multi position mode and floating mode okay three types of discontinuous controllers then continuous controllers we have Single mode P, I, D, and composite mode P, D, P, I, and P, I, D. Okay. Split range, auto select, ratio, and cascade controllers, various types of controllers, and selection criteria. Okay. And lastly, which is very important, controller P, I, D. Okay. How to tune the P, I, D? Various methods of tuning P, I, D controllers. Okay. So we will have. A lab experiment on PID tuning also based on MATLAB. Okay. So that way, this is important chapter in this subject: controllers, various types of controllers, and that too, the PID control. This is the outline of the chapter. Let's start with subtopic 3.1: discontinuous controllers. Okay. Anyway, uh, the process controllers are used everywhere in the industry without controllers the system cannot run okay might be petrochemical pharmaceutical automobile automobile industry or wine industry any type uh, any any type of industry okay will require controllers and the requirements of the controllers for different types of industries will be different okay suppose we have the refrigerator manufacturing industry, okay, refrigeration. So, what will require for a temperature control? Will require a temperature control, right? Someone is finding, let me admit. Sure, Okay, so if the refrigeration manufacturing company is there, it will require temperature control. And for the temperature control, we know in the refrigerator there is a component called the thermostat. Okay, what is the thermostat? Thermostat is a transducer, or uh, it has a sensing element, okay, like biometric and biometallic strips. So what is the function of that? We set the temperature of the refrigerator and that is part of the set point. Right? Then if the temperature goes below the set temperature, then refrigerator supply should be cut. That is, controller should be off then or should, the controller should be zero. 
whereas if the temperature goes above the set temperature the thermostat should connect the supply controller output should be full that is 230 volt supply should be given to the refrigerator okay so uh, this type of controller is very simple and it is used for refrigerator manufacturing or uh, whatever this is for the two position or on a control this is simplest one okay but some industries will require continuous control right as we increase uh, as the parameter to be um, controlled control variable changes then simply on off will not suffice so it will require continuous control so the, the requirements of uh, different industries are different so controllers required will be different okay further in some uh, some systems or some industries the parameters are to be controlled very tightly okay like in uh, uh, power generation sector suppose the frequency if the nominal frequency is uh, 50 hertz the tolerances are very tight so it is 49.5 to 50.5 okay whereas these tolerances are not so tight as we say in the refrigerator okay so that's not that much tight so uh, the requirements of the controllers with respect to their tolerances are also different okay so these are the process controllers that okay so various parameters are to be controlled like temperature flow level pressure humidity and what not okay so we have certain set point and temperature of flow or level of pressure or humidity or any other parameter has to be kept or maintained to the set point if it varies if it deviates from the set point it should be brought back to set point value okay so these are the closed loop systems that we are already well known with this diagram you are already well known with okay so we have a reference input which is called a set point we have a controller we have a process and the output c of t is fed back and there is a summing point that compares the reference input and the feedback okay p of t rather we call it as p of t and the difference between r and b p of t it is given to the controller controller produces an appropriate signal output of u of t that is given to the process a final controlling element like walls Uh, or something like that, and that then corrects the acts on the pressure rather. This uh, controller output acts on the process, and then it corrects the output value. Okay, output like temperature, pressure, flow, or level, etc. So this is a closed loop control system, right? We are familiar with, right? Process controller looks at a signal. What 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 is the function of the uh, controller then? it looks at the signal represented in process value it compares it with the set point so output it checks it compares with uh, a reference or set point okay? and acts on the process to minimize this difference so error should be zero ideally the error should between the set point and the output should be zero so this output fed back here okay and the method by which the controller method the controller used to correct the error is called as mode of the controller control mode okay so what is the control mode its method by which the controller corrects the error okay this is called as control okay now uh what are the important parts of the system okay one is the process on which uh, of which the output rather some of the control variable is to be controlled and 
second part is the control plug right there are two main parts or main components of this system okay, right so before choosing before designing control of for a particular system you must have certain knowledge of uh, process and controller both what are the types of controller what are the characteristics or specifications of various types of controllers what actually in the process is what are its properties okay so various processes there are different processes in different industries so what are the characteristics of these processes right those must be known and what are the parameters of the controllers that must be known so that we can design an appropriate controller for a given process so there should be a match between controller and process then the system will work the choice of controller depends upon type of process and the parameters of the controller right so let us first understand what are the general characteristics of process and what are the various control controller parameters okay and then we will discuss types of control modes right so let's start with understanding the process characteristics the so main co co components are the process and control or control systems okay so we need to understand the characteristics and system par control par controller parameters right so various types of uh, process characteristics are what is the relation between input and output okay that is given by process equation right what is mean by process load what are transient what is mean by process lag and whether the process is self regulating or without self regulation so these uh, characteristics we must know to have the knowledge of the process let's take one by one first process equation okay uh, as far as uh, the system is concerned the total control system is concerned we have certain control variable or parameter say the temperature of the room is to be controlled so temperature becomes the control parameter of control variable that is the final output okay and another is controlling parameter what quantity is used to change the temperature or keep the temperature constant so one is control variable or control parameter and other is controlling parameter which is the medium through which the control variable variable is kept at a constant level okay the control uh, variable is affected by many different sources right okay many, many uh, external and internal parameters will be there sources will be there if we try to change our control variable say the temperature okay then if the control variable shows the deviation from the changes like temperature changes okay the controlling parameter which we are using as medium it changed in such a way that it brings the control variable back to the set point that is the function of controlling variable parameter so there are two parts there again one is control variable and other is controlling parameter okay so let's see what is the process equation Okay. as an example consider this system okay here the liquid temperature temperature of the liquid in the tank is the control variable we want to keep the temperature of the liquid in the tank to be constant right and what are the related all other parameters okay various parameters are this inlet discharge flow inlet flow q a right then initial temperature t zero right so this is the medium through which we are changing the temperature or keeping the temperature constant okay there is a control valve and this is the steam inlet and the temperature of the steam so steam flow and temperature of the steam these are ok 
between two parameters okay inlet discharge or inlet flow and its temperature are the t0 are the uh, other two parameters okay there is pipe b this is pipe a for inlet and this is pipe b for outlet so outlet discharge or outlet flow is another parameter and ambient temperature or surrounding temperature is uh, another parameter whereas the controlled parameter is this one liquid level uh, liquid temperature right so the temperature is sensed it is given to the controller one of the input to the controller is set point the output is given to the control wall and the opening of the control wall will decide the flow of steam amount of flow of steam to these tubings okay larger the steam flow then the temperature will increase smaller the steam flow temperature of the liquid will decrease okay and of course that is the function of uh, qa and qb also if qa is more than qb qa is more than qb then temperature will increase okay because the more storage will be there for longer time qb is larger and qa is smaller then temperature tl will decrease because the uh, flow rate is more okay that's the way the system uh, is work let me admit someone who is uh, entering with this okay right so this is how the uh, what are the uh, different parameters then qa and qb flow rates in pipe a and pipe b qa is the steam flow rate ta is the ambient or surrounding temperature t0 is the inlet fluid temperature this one and ts is the steam temperature all these are the parameters related to this tank uh, liquid level temperature liquid temperature control system right to so control variable is liquid temperature controlling parameter is this steam flow larger the steam flow the higher will be the temperature smaller the steam flow and that is controlled by the opening of the valve okay more opening more steam flow larger temperature small opening small steam flow and uh, smaller temperature okay lesser temperature so tl is the outlet uh, output uh, control variable and controlling parameter is qs so finally the process equation can be expressed as liquid temperature tl is a function of all these parameters right what are those qa qb flow through pipe a and b steam flow and uh, surrounding temperature steam temperature the initial temperature of the t0 of the inlet flow okay so uh, what we are not concerned actually with other parameters rather than tl and qs our controlling parameter is qs so control loop adjust qs function of control loop is steam flow is adjusted in such a way that tl is adjusted to its set point value okay if tl deviates from set point value then qs automatically changes in such a the control loop this control loop will change qs in such a way that tl will be brought back to its set point value so if tl deviates it is changed is given to the controller compared with the set point and that will direct the or uh, produce a signal which will open or close the control wall uh, in such a way that steam flow will increase or decrease depending upon the requirements so that tl will be brought back to its set point value and it will be zero right so this is how the process equation may be okay we need not know uh, exact equation sometimes we need required to know exact equation sometimes that depends upon the process uh, rather the process and control system as a whole okay so 
rather we must know the function between tl and qs so these parameters need not be uh, considered while considering the function okay next is process load okay first was process equation next is what is mean by process load will be uh, using these terms uh, when designing a controller or while working on the controller these terms will be frequently used what is mean by process load so understand what is process load okay. uh, see we have a set point of for the temperature suppose let us take an example of this uh, this system okay we have a set point for tl okay 70 degree celsius should be the temperature we have a set point okay so for a 70 degree celsius set point there will be values of all these parameters qa will be having some value qb will be having some value qs has to be adjusted to some value surrounding temperature say we say it is constant then it will have certain value then initial uh, temperature of the inlet flow has certain value and steam temperature has certain value so for a particular set point value tl okay all these parameters possess certain value so what are the what, what is the set of values of these parameters corresponding to set point is called as the nominal set okay it is called as the nominal set a set of all parameters identified to have control variable at the set point value is called as the nominal set okay what is the process load importantly the process load is the nominal set nominal set is the values of all other parameters nominal set is all the parameters of the system for the set point value of the control variable okay so process load is the nominal set excluding the control variable so tl chhod ke baaki jo parameters ki values hai corresponding to set point that is called as process load okay so all the values if it is taken as a set okay then it is uh, corresponding to set point it is called as a process load when all parameters have nominal value we say that there is nominal load on the system okay say for the same system we have qa is equal to 10 liters per second qb is equal to 5 liters per second qs is equal to uh, some meter cube per second right so ta has 40 degree celsius ts has 100 degree celsius and to has 30 degree celsius all these values form a set okay excluding qs if this variable is at a set point excluding cs qa qb ts t or ta ts and t0 this form a nominal set okay and if all parameters have nominal values for a set point we we say that the load of the process is nominal load okay nominal load if one of the parameter is changed any of the parameter changes causing change in control variable then we say that there is change in process load okay process load is change when we say process load is change excluding qs ke the high definition so we will not consider this right so qa qb ta ts and tz right so if inlet ta qa changes there will be more inlet flow more inlet flow and steam flow require remain same the temperature will drop right and this, then we call it as though all other parameters remaining same if qa changes the load of the process changes there is change in process load remaining parameters in the same if qa and qb both are same q qa is same p0 is same ts is same one of them all Or more than one of them, if they change, the process load changes. Okay, so there is a concept nominal load, and there is change in process load. Okay, so 
So this is what is the process code. One of the parameters change, causing change in control variable, and we say that there is change in process flow. Next, next is transient. What was the first? First was the process equation, the relation between the controlling parameter and the control variable. The second one was process load, the values of all the parameters that are uh, preparing that are uh, rather existing for a set point value right so that is the load of the process uh, then what is meant by transient see what is transient if there is a temporary variation of the load parameter in okay, any load parameter and after some time it returns to nominal value then it is called as a transient okay so for our example say uh, what what change we could uh, see for this one? Suppose due to some factor, the inlet QA increases, right? Inlet QA increases and then suddenly increases and then goes down or comes to its original value, right? So this will not be called as a load change. It's called as a transient. Okay. So transient causes the variation. So they, they, these two concepts are different. Though the load parameters are changing, load parameters are changing. But if the change is permanent or for a longer time, then it is called as a load change. If the change in parameter value is for a small period, then it is called as a or it is a temporary variation. It is called as a transient. Okay, transient causes the variation in the Take care to keep it minimum. So this transient we have seen in control systems also. Okay, peak overshoot and undershoots and overshoots of uh, control system of the second second order uh, transfer function, right? This one of second order transfer function systems. So this is for uh, what is the transient, and uh, we must know uh, note that. Transient is not a load change. Okay? Transient is a temporary variation in one of the parameters. So that temporary variation of that transient will die down soon. Its amplitude decays. Right? So this is not this will not be treated as a load change. Next is uh, let's recall once again the first was first was process equation. Second was process load, third was transient, and next is process lag. Okay. See what is mean by process lag. This is important characteristics rather. Uh, when the control variable is changed due to change in process load or transient, any any one, okay, control variable is changed. Say inlet flow is increased, outlet flow, outlet flow is decreased. Uh, this is the load change, and there is some transient on, say, ambient temperature or in, uh, increase in temperature of the inlet flow. So, whatever the thing is that due to this control variable changes, and control loop takes action, restores the set point value after some finite time. Okay? So, part of this time, the corrective action is being done and started, but it will take time. And part of this time is taken by controller, and part of this time will be taken by the process itself. Okay. So corrective action has a total time. Out of this, some of the time is taken by controller itself, and some of the time is taken by process itself. Okay. So the time taken by the process is called as the process lag. A uh, simple example of our bathroom meters. Initially, okay, what we do, we uh, switch on the heater, right? And then uh, the, the hot water, we start the tap, okay? So, some hot water will, uh, it, it will take some time, initial time, but then a particular temperature. Uh, 
will be uh, reached and that temperature water will be uh, coming out of the tap then suddenly if we increase the inlet flow inlet flow okay what will happen is it corrective uh, corrective action will be started because uh, it will be sensed that inlet flow qa is increased okay so this will be sensed by the sensor because the temperature drops right and it will be given to the controller and then uh, the corrective action will be started the temperature of uh, our heater okay will be increased or steam flow whatever it is increased and later after some time the temperature will come to its set point value but during this time when initially the inlet flow increases right so that will decrease the temperature from 70 degrees to say 65 degrees okay and coming back from 65 to 70 will take some time so controller takes corrective action starts corrective action but the inlet water which has already reached or uh, into the tank okay it will take time to reach that temperature so this is called as the process lag okay so time taken by process is called as the process lag so if process lag is the characteristics of the process then whatever fast your uh, controller is the process will be bound to take that much time so the faster controller design will not help in overcoming the process lag corrective action kitni bhi pehle start ho jaye jaldi start ho jaye if process itself has certain lag or time lag then there is no advantage in designing a control system many times faster than process lag so process lag time lagging time must be known so that we can design a proper controller okay so if it has a certain process lag then that is that time is bound to be taken by the process okay to bring the back, bring back the control variable to set point okay and accordingly Uh, we should design our controller okay uh, very fast controller many times uh, faster than the process lag that will not help in any case okay this is what is the process lag and uh, uh, there is uh, all the systems all the practical systems have certain process lag okay uh so going to this again recall the first uh, characteristic was process equation second was process load third was transient and next was process lag and now the self regulation okay so what is the self regulation uh, system with self regulation some processes have tendency to adopt a specific value of controlled variable for the nominal load with no control action So, in absence of control, also if nominal if there is nominal load, then they will add up. The system will add up a particular value of control variable, say temperature. Okay, the control operation may be significantly affected by such temperature. So, without control operation, if there is certain uh, system is adopting to a particular value, okay, then the controller will have certain problems okay example of self regulating system okay with a particular opening of the steam valve in our system the system settles to some temperature okay ab load change ho gaya temperature set hua tha ab load change ho gaya there is a new temperature to which the system is adopted without control operation okay system adopts it and settles down to the new temperature this is called as self regulating okay this system is called as self regulating system there is an example of non self regulating system with no self regulating system see a tank with 
liquid being pumped at fixed rate. Okay, there is a tank is there, inlet pipe is there, outlet pipe is there, and uh, the pipe uh, outlet pipe the the flow the water is flowing. The so liquid is flowing out of the tank. Okay, and assuming that inlet is equal to outlet, the level in the tank will be steady level. Jitna liquid tank mein aa raha hai, utna hi agar nikal raha hai, the level in the tank will be steady one. Okay? But if the inlet increases slightly, okay? and outlet remains the same, the level of the uh, liquid in the tank will rise until the tank overflows, okay? so system will not settle at a particular level. It's like for this temperature system, with load change, the system was adopting new temperature and was settling down to that, which then it was called a self-regulating. But here, if the inlet slightly increases, that is load changes, then that case, the system will not adapt to any level. System will not adapt to any new level. It will level will increase and increase and increase until the tank overflows. So this system is having no regulation, self-regulation. Okay, and actually the system should be like this. With self-regulation, will create some sort of problems in control uh, controller operation. Okay, so uh, we must know whether the system is self-regulating or not. What is amount of process lag of the system? Are there any transients of any par uh, parameters of the process? What is the load on the process? What is the nominal load and how the load is changing? The parameters are changing. That is process load. What is the relation between? Uh, control variable or the parameters, right? So process equation, process load, transient, process lag, and self-regulation are the characteristics of process. Okay. Process equation, process load, transient, process lag, and self-regulation. These are the process characteristics. Okay. So before designing or selecting any controller for a particular process, these process characteristics must be known. Right? Next, let's go to second part. The control system parameter or controller parameters. Okay, what are the controller parameters? Input is error. Controller input is the error R minus B. Range of the variable, controlled variable. Okay, whatever is the P, controlled variable range, right? Then controlling parameter range. Control variable, say temperature, controlling parameter, the steam dish, uh, flow, steam flow, QS. QS and TL. In our example, this was TL and this was QS, right? So control lag. What is the amount of delay made by controller itself? Like process lag, we have some control lag also because the output is to be taken since then processed and then compared with the uh, set point and then error will be uh, generated and that error is given to the controller, controller has to take decision and generate certain signal. So this process will take time or the delay will be there and whatever amount of delay through controller itself is called as a control lag, right? Dead time wherein the output doesn't uh, uh, the respond to change in input. The period in which the output does not respond to change in input is called the dead time. Then oscillations, then it's cycling, mode of the controller, various modes of the controllers, right? And reverse and direct action. So all these eight are the parameters of the controller parameters, right? Let's take one by one. So absolute error, error is generated as T is equal to R minus the set point minus the feedback or output, right? So R is the set point and B is the major value of the output. 
control variable. Variance is generally expressed as a percentage or range of measured value. C. That is the measured value after the process. The complete system is not shown here. There is a process after this, and output of the process is C. Right? So, if that measured value is C, and the control variable has its minimum and maximum value, temperature has minimum and maximum value, then the error, percentage error, Cp is measured. Okay. What is Cp? The percentage of the span over the range of measured variables. Cp will be actually measured value minus minimum uh, of the control variable, maximum minus minimum to 100. So Cp will be given by this, where C is the actual measured value, C max is the maximum measured value, C means the minimum value, right? So, this is how the error is expressed. Another way to express the error is like this. In terms of R and B, we can express. Above equation can be uh, expressed in terms of is it a variable, right? But in terms of R and B, it can be expressed as EP, the error. R is the set point minus B is the measured value. Maximum value of B minus minimum value of B. Okay, so EP will be calculated by this formula R minus B divided by B max minus B. Okay, example is taken here. Let the set point be 10.5 milliamperes. We have uh, transmitter 4 to 20 milliampere range transmitter. Okay, and uh, we have set the Whatever the temperature, pressure, and corresponding set point in in terms of our range, 4 to 20 milliampere range is 10.5 milliampere. Say 50 degrees correspond to 10.5 milliampere, and the actual measured value is 13.7 milliampere. TL actual actual value of TL is uh, is say uh, 15 or something like uh, 50 degrees Celsius. And corresponding current is 13.7 milliamperes. Then, without knowing what is being measured, temperature, pressure, flow, level, whatever being measured, the error can be calculated as set point value minus actual measured value divided by maximum value minus minimum value. And then the error we say is 20 percent. Okay, the error is. Minus 20 percent. So in this way, error can be calculated. Okay. So there is a, a simple example or problem here. So the same figure is considered as we have taken in the example, right? The temperature in the figure has a range of 300 to 400 K. Okay. And the set point is. 384 degree Kelvin, right? So find the percent error of the span when the temperature is 37 Kelvin, right? So what is the set point? 384. What is the maximum value? 440. What is the minimum value? 300, right? So what uh, substituting in the formula set point minus actual value 384 minus 379 right divided by maximum value minus minimum value right and uh, calculate and tell me the answer anyone having calculator okay set point value is 384 actual value is 379 so 384 minus 379 how much it is 5, right? So it's 5 divided by 440 minus 300. It's 140. So 5 divided by 140 into 100. How much is the percentage? It's 500 divided by 140. 500 divided by 140. How much it is? It comes out to be 3.6 percent error. Right? So this is how we can use this formula. Right? R minus B divided by B max minus 
this will be okay so this is the set point r the actual measured value b this is b max and this is b min right so we get this as an answer so next parameter first was the error but what we are discussing now already we have discussed process characteristics now we are discussing controller parameter so first was important characteristic important parameter error now the control variable range okay the second parameter is control variable range the control variable has certain range of values within its, uh, which it is to be maintained right so temperature home pressure or any flow level etc we have to maintain uh, this parameter within certain range so this range can be expressed as either minimum or maximum c min c max right or some nominal value and plus or minus some deviation in it okay specified variation okay say temperature uh, if it is a controlled variable i can uh, set the values minimum value to be 50 degrees celsius maximum value to be 55 degrees celsius right and the say minimum and maximum so c min is 50 c max is 55 right so in this way it can be uh, expressed or other other way of expressing is 50 plus or minus 2.5 50 plus or minus 2.5 so maximum will be 52.5 minimum will be 47.5 so it can be expressed controlled variable range can be expressed in these ways two ways okay say in 4 to 20 million per system 4 is minimum and 20 is the maximum value right whereas for digital systems maximum is 1 and minimum is So this is control variable range. Next is controlling parameter range. Control parameter range. Okay. This is related to controller output. Okay. And the controller uh, output as a percentage of full scale is okay, zero percent and hundred percent. These will be the controller outputs. Minimum is say zero percent and maximum is hundred percent. So percentage controller output as a percentage of full scale. when output varies between specified limit okay jaise ki maine bataya abhi 50 plus or minus 2.5 degree celsius so 52.5 was the maximum 50 uh, 47.5 was the minimum so corresponding to these values what are the controller values right so this u max is corresponding to 52.5 u min is corresponding to uh, 47.5 right and u is the actual mean uh, output right so uh, controller output actual controller output as a percentage of full scale then will be u minus u min divided by u max minus p is the controller output as a percent of full scale to value of uh, output of the controller u max is the maximum value of the controlling parameter corresponding to maximum value of controlled parameter u min is the minimum value of controlling parameter corresponding to minimum value of uh, controlled parameter there is an example for controlled parameter range then the controller parameter uh, controller output at 4 to 20 million uh, milliampere signal the control uh, control motor feed from 140 to 600 rpm with linear dependence this relation is given linear okay output of the controller e is 4 to 20 million and the controlled variable uh, which is the speed of the motor range that is c min c max is this and u min u max is this right and the relation between this is linear calculate the cor current corresponding to c10 rpm the value of this a expresses the percentage of control output okay so c min c max and 
human humans are given right they are asked to find out u corresponding to the c given c right and its percentage as of the full scale okay okay here is the solution then is it visible can i have response is this visible can you see this anyone present anyone answer please yes sir okay uh, so what is the controller output range 4 to 20 million controlled variable range 140 to 600 relation kaisa hai mean and what is to be found out i okay, corresponding to retain and i expressed as controller output span or full scale right let's find out uh, first the current corresponding to this speed of the motor okay relation given is linear therefore let's assume the equation as y is equal to mx plus c straight line equation so speed okay speed sp is equal to m into current right y is equal to mx plus c that is s0 some constant speed so sp is equal to m into i plus s0 so we are assuming because the relation given is linear one okay so we will get two equations for minimum and maximum of both right so for minimum 140 is equal to m into 4 milliampere current plus s0 600 is equal to m into 20 milliampere plus s0 solving this we get m is equal to this s0 is equal to this one okay now what we want to find out current corresponding to 310 so we will push, substitute these values of m and s0 in this equation here uh, i have done the calculation wrong Do not go on this one so this should be 310 instead of 140 okay this is Uh, written wrong please correct it so note that this is 310 okay so substituting this m and s0 in this one and sp is equal to 300 i comes out to be 9.91 million okay so first part is lower i for 300 10 and now this 9.91 is to be expressed as percentage of full span right so we have controller output expressed as percentage of uh, full scale or span p is equal to u minus u min divided by u max minus u min into 100 so u is the actual current value 9.91 minimum is 4 max maximum is 20 and minimum is 2 and controller output corresponding to this speed is 36.9 percent okay. is it understood then okay next uh, at time cycling controller mode controller mode direct and reverse action okay three characteristics are remaining and then we will go to actual control modes these many control modes are to be discussed this continuous continuous composite etc that we will discuss later but this properties of the rather parameters of the controller what are remaining date time cycling Controller modes and direct and reverse action. Four control parameters are remaining. This time is over. We we'll stop the lecture here. We we'll continue in the next lecture. So what we did today is we just introduced what is the types of uh, what is 
necessity of the controllers then what are the main parts and the, what are the process characteristics and controller parameters okay so what were that so what do we discuss today basically was process characteristics process equation Process load, transients, process lag, and step regulation. What is mean by this? And then all these characteristics. And then controller parameters. We have we have eight parameters like this. Out of that, error, variable range, control parameter range. Okay. This we have already discussed. Control lag and dead time, etc. Uh, probably we have missed Monday's lecture or rather Monday's lecture na? so that will be shall we arrange on uh, Friday tomorrow or Saturday what will be suitable to you Your suggestion. Your suggestion. Tomorrow, sir. What's your suggestion? Otherwise, I will specify the time. Tell it to tomorrow or day after. Tomorrow, tomorrow, sir, tomorrow. Anyone is there or not? Pranav, Devashri, huh? Tomorrow, okay. Okay, I'll put a message then for tomorrow lecture, okay? Uh, tomorrow, I think, is holiday. Am I right? So we will have lecture tomorrow then. Right, let me mark the attendance. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, lecture will be tomorrow only. I'll specify the time. Okay. So thank you. Thank you very much then. Okay. I'm finding the lecture out. Okay, okay. Yes, lecture will be tomorrow. I'm typing then. Yes, you may leave then. 